I think it must have been 1998 or 1999, I was still living in America and I was at a bar in Walnut Creek, California called Dan's. I was sitting with this guy and he leaned over to ask me a question and the way he asked it expressed very clearly his concern that maybe this is a bit of a racist question. The question he asked was, do you think rap is music? Now, it's a tricky thing when you know a subject well and you're being asked a question by someone who doesn't because you can't give them all the experience you've had. And at that point, I had left CalArts a few years before with my first degree and I had a really, really different awareness than most people about what is music. And what I wanted to do was just kind of open up my brain and say, here! This is what music is to me, but I couldn't do that. And so I said, as authoritatively as possible, yes, of course. But what I really wanted to do was say, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. Do you get it? Do you understand how big music is? And of course I couldn't do that. So I kind of thought I'd make this video because in the 20 years since then, I've been asked that question a lot in all kinds of different contexts. You know, is this music? Is this music? Is this real music? And for me, we need to define music with a pretty big umbrella. And so I thought I would share some things that I think are music. Um, for instance, this is music. Now, when we listen to that, we understand there is no harmony and there is very, 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 very little pitch information. Now, for a lot of people, you'd say, that's not music, but you can't listen to that and think, oh, that's not music. And so, for most people, the objection to rap is, it's not sung, and it doesn't really have complicated chords and things that we kind of associate with music. If samba is music, I think it's pretty safe to say that rap is music because it ticks a lot of the same boxes. It has a huge complexity of rhythm, it has obvious structure to it, Music ultimately is just about organizing sound. There was a famous composer in the 20th century named John Cage, and that was literally his definition of music, the organization of sound. Now that led him and people of his generation to pursue the kind of fringes of that definition. And so you get things like this. Now that's a trickier example because it has things that are obviously musical in it, but it also has things which you might say, well that's not music, but if we're looking at this as broadly the organization of sound, then all of it's music. The obvious complication with that is, do you at any point draw the line? And so for John Cage and other people of that generation of experimental music creators, you didn't draw any line. It was literally, if you're organizing sound, that's music. There was a really famous story of John Cage being paid money to compose music for a New York art opening. And everybody's waiting for John Cage and he goes into this room where this art installation is and he just, <laughs> and it's in New York. And he goes around and he opens up all the windows and leaves. And then after a certain amount of time, he comes in and he shuts all the windows. Now, what he's done is he's organized the ambient sound in that environment. So he has created a space in which you can hear the sound of New York, which normally you can't in a New York art gallery. And so that changed the organization of sound for that event. Is that music? 
Some people would say no, but if we're making our umbrella as big as we can, yeah, it's music. I mean, personally, for me, it's one of those things that's what you would call conceptual art. And one of the difficulties with conceptual art is once you've done it, you've done it. And there's usually no great impetus to do it again. John Cage incredibly famously did a piece called Four Minutes, 33 Seconds, where someone comes in, sits at a piano for an unprescribed length of time, doesn't have to be four minutes and 33 seconds, and gets up and leaves. And that's the framing of the piece. And so the music is the sound of shuffling programs and coughing and all the kind of audience sounds that normally you don't listen to. Um, again, that's conceptual art. I don't need to see that six times. I can kind of get the point and move on with my life and do other things. Which makes it different from other more formally structured kinds of music where, you know, if I've heard one song by a band, I want to hear all the other songs by the band because I know they're going to be different. And so there is arguably a line to be drawn at where does music become interestingly repeatable. And kind of for me, that's probably where I would draw the line. In terms of music I actually want to listen to, conceptual art, I get, it's interesting, but I don't really need anything from it other than the idea of it. There was a critic named Tom Wolfe, really famous for having written The Bonfire of the Vanities, but wrote a lot of other stuff. And he wrote this book called The Painted Word, in which he argued that ultimately art galleries would be full of paintings this big, with explanations of the paintings that would fill up the rest of the wall. And, you know, he was saying that that's a problem, that art should be about the thing, not about the explanation of the thing. We've really gone back to wanting art to be the thing for the last 50 years, for a really long time. We kind of <laughs> went through the whole conceptual thing in the 60s and 70s and came out of it. And a lot of people don't feel the need for that. And in a sense, the art world is much more conservative than it has been in a really long time. So it's not surprising that these questions still crop up. When I was asked in 1998, 1999, do you think rap is music? Part of me thought, oh man, are we still dealing with this? But, you know, in 2021, we're still dealing with this. The famous commentator Ben Shapiro in the last several years, I'm not exactly sure when, I'm not a huge Ben Shapiro follower, came out and he said, hip hop isn't music. And his dad is a music teacher and he said, music must have this, this, and this. Well, by his dad's definition, music must have pitch and harmony, so samba music isn't music. Which seems ridiculous, hopefully, <laughs> you know, you would agree with that. There are very few things that present themselves as music that I would have any hesitation describing as music. People think that electronic dance music isn't music because it's so repetitive, or they think that experimental 20th century music composition isn't music because it's so wacky, or they think that rap isn't music because it lacks certain kinds of chord progressions and melody and that kind of stuff. Music's big, and it's in our interest that it be big. And I think the two reasons people ask, is this music, are one, ignorance, and that's just a cultural thing. That's, um, I haven't been exposed to this, this is outside my comfort zone. And the other thing is snobbishness, which is this idea that music must attain a certain level of virtuosity. It has to be good. It has to show off that you know what you're doing on your instrument. And there's lots of stuff that's music that doesn't do that. Punk was a rejection of that. A lot of kinds of music have been rejections of that. Even classical music, Mozart and those guys in the late 18th century, they were rejecting a lot of the complexity that had come in the late Baroque period with Bach and Vivaldi and all those guys. So the whole swinging pendulum of how complicated, how virtuosic should art be, that's been going on forever. And I don't think that that's a credible way of defining art. So hopefully, the next time someone asks you, so do you think such and such and such is music, your absolute instinct will be to say, yes, of course. And then maybe you have a discussion about it. But, you know, I think... I think we should be edging very strongly towards yes. See you next time. Thanks for watching.